Today, I want to talk about how short sellers may be threatening CEOs into admitting that synthetic shorts don't exist. I'm actually not talking about Adam Aaron in this instance. I'm actually talking about someone entirely different. So stay tuned and let's make some money. And now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So I want to start by showing you this video of a man buying the entire issued float of a company, but then seeing over 50 million shares traded the very next day. Synthetic shares have become a proven fact over the last couple of months, with more and more support being released weekly. In March 2005, the Senate Banking Committee confronted then SEC Chairman William Donaldson with a story about Frank DeBrookie's company, the Nevada-based real estate holding company Global Links. An investor named Robert Simpson had set out to prove that small companies were indeed frequent targets of abusive naked short sellers. Simpson placed an order for $5,000 worth of stock in Global Links. That got Simpson ownership of all 1.1 million Global Links shares in the market. Not some of them, all of them. There were no shares available to be borrowed, and yet in two days there were over 50 million shares traded. That's clearly something that needs needs work. I was absolutely blown away when I bought 1,282,050 shares, which equated to 111% of the issued and outstanding. So as I said, there's complete proof that synthetic shares absolutely do exist and have existed for some time. This isn't the only support, we've seen more and more support being released every single year, and especially over the last few months. The latest support is obviously TradeStation admitting to holding 194% of the shares for MMTLP than they were issued from the DTCC. The DTCC told TradeStation they only held 122,000 shares of MMTLP, but TradeStation had on their books 237,000 suggesting the float for MMTLP was at least sold twice over as TradeStation were holding tons of synthetic illegal shares. As I said, this is a revelation that isn't new. This has been going on for a long time now, and more and more support is being released every single week. More and more of these banks and hedge funds are actually being caught for their illegal manipulation, but are just simply receiving small speeding ticket fines. But that's what makes me wonder more and more as to why this tweet is being released. So Jeremy Frommer, the CEO from Created or CRTD, has said that after extensive due diligence, we've concluded there is no evidence of extraordinary or unlawful trading activity. Saying we're grateful to the team at Lint Partners for their diligent efforts and time invested in seeking a resolution to this matter. So with all this support and factual information about synthetic shares being released, why are CEOs like Jeremy Frommer coming out and saying there's no evidence of synthetic shares trading? As I said, ignoring Adam Aaron here, Jeremy Frommer is saying the exact same thing about CRTD that apparently no synthetics are trading. Now, maybe it's the case that there are actually no synthetic shares in CRTD. It's not something I've kept up with as the time has gone by. I don't know how many synthetics there's supposed to be or is rumoured to be, but Jeremy Frommer seems to think they don't exist. Or what's potentially even more likely is maybe these CEOs like Jeremy Frommer are being threatened by the short sellers. And actually, Jeremy Frommer isn't the only one saying this and isn't the only one that's potentially been forced to keep quiet. Right, there was also another brilliant day in the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group. RJ started off the day with an 18.9% gain. JJ locked in over $400, mostly on LBPH. And Kevin went two for two, taking two profitable trades, one for 20% and another for another 15% on top of that. So guys, if you want to be making daily profitable trades just like these, be sure to join the Millionaire Mindset Trading Group using the link in the description below. Remember, there's a 100% guaranteed refund policy. There's long-term trades, there's short-term trades, there's stock trades, and there's option trades. You may remember Roger Hamilton a while back tweeted saying from January to March, I was extremely vocal about our GNS fight against naked shorts. But from April to June, I've been forced to be much quieter, despite plenty of progress on legal fronts, spin-off, corporate actions and company growth. Saying why? Whereas Christian warned me CEOs who went public in the past with their fight against Wall Street fraud came under attack and became the target themselves of investigation by the very institutions that should be protecting us from the market manipulators. 
and saying it didn't take long for GNS also to be targeted, with me personally finding an arrow on my back, and I've been effectively gagged from speaking out, and saying we've now become the victim to the same death spiral we were in last year by being intimidated into silence, and saying I've seen many other good company CEOs also being silenced, and retail investors losing out as a result of what's going on behind the scenes. So it seems both Jeremy Frommer and also Roger Hamilton were forced to be quiet and effectively admit that synthetic shorts don't exist in their company. Which actually to me sounds very similar if not the exact same words that were uttered and issued by Adam Aaron too. Maybe Adam Aaron came under attack for speaking out on synthetic shorts all that time ago, just like Roger Hamilton and Jeremy Frommer have been too. Now why obviously would these shorts want to intimidate companies and their CEOs into stopping talking about synthetic shorting? Well obviously because they're scared of the truth getting out there and they're scared of retail investors clubbing together against those short sellers, crushing them and liquidating them. And that's also why hedge funds are likely suing the SEC trying to stop that short interest data being released to the public. As Boss Blunt's tweeted, he said, don't forget, hedge funds are suing the SEC for forcing them to report short interest data. Shorts are in big trouble. You remember articles like these saying that hedge funds sue the SEC over the new short selling rules in wake of the meme stock mania. Those hedge funds are saying the rules will impair price discovery and hurt investors by exposing short sellers in their positions. To me, all it really sounds like that's going to be hurting is those short sellers. Especially as Ken Griffin obviously recently said that markets are efficient not because supply and demand dictates the price, but because Ken Griffin at Citadel Securities and other market makers dictate the price of those securities for everybody else. Or they drive the value of those companies towards where we think they should be valued. John Stewart a while ago said this conversation doesn't end here. The one thing I've learned all this time is they're banking on you losing your stamina. They're banking on you losing your tenacity. And saying the fact that this strength is in your community and it's so strong and it's evolving is the worst thing that could possibly happen to those short sellers. Now on that note of hedge funds suing the SEC, Joe Schmo actually tweeted something very, very interesting. And this is a letter written to the SEC quite some time ago. Now this article, this extract says internalization is one of the greatest threats to price discovery in the financial markets. Internalization is where market makers internalize trades and keep them on their books instead of pushing them through the market for trades to take place under supply and demand laws. Citadel is a big perpetrator of internalization so they can dictate the price to where they want it to go. But Joe Schmo asked the question saying guess who wrote this letter to the SEC wanting to stop internalization? This is actually a letter sent from Ken Griffin himself at Citadel Securities obviously a long time ago before he became a criminal. Isn't it ironic how Ken Griffin and Citadel Securities at one point wanted payment for order flow and internalization to be banned and now they're literally trying to sue the SEC to stop the banning of PFOF internalization and also to stop short selling disclosures being made. The famous saying for criminals is if you can't beat them, just join them. And it seems that is exactly what Ken Griffin and Citadel Securities have done. Now the French Jape tweeted saying here's the annual revenue of AMC Theatres, saying AMC is about to hit $5 billion in revenue. So pre-pandemic levels with just one half the number of theatrical releases. The current market cap for AMC is at $1 billion and the price is at an all-time low, but with revenues at all-time highs even over pre-pandemic levels. He's saying the shorts didn't drive the price of AMC down because AMC is doing poorly as a company. They drove the price down because they're in big trouble. They need AMC at all-time low prices to try and scare investors into selling their shares and to try and leave those unrealized profits unrealized. You can see AMC's revenue over the last couple of years has increased from 1.2 billion to 2.5 to 3.9 or 4 billion at 2022, expected to tip over 5 billion for 2023 back to pre-pandemic levels. AK AMC is setting new records and at some point the stock price will catch up setting new all-time highs. And finally as Biotech most tweeted he said AMC currently has a billion dollars in cash an amount almost equal to its current market cap. 
So he said, guess what? AMC just entered deep value territory. The intrinsic value of AMC is much, much higher than its current stock price. He said, don't worry, many institutions on the street see it too. Shorts are nearly out of time. Many might say, oh Tom, but what about the debt? As I've touched on before, there's many companies out there like Starbucks, McDonald's, Domino's, Pizza Hut, and many others that have more debt than they have assets. Many of these companies have 20, 30 billion dollars in assets, but 50, 60, 70 billion dollars in debt. Way more debt than they have assets. Does it mean these huge conglomerate companies like Starbucks and McDonald's are going to go bankrupt next week? Guys, trust me, they're bankrupt next week. Short them right now. No, of course it doesn't. These companies are the biggest companies in their industry. The reason why they have so much debt is because they're operating in capital intensive industries where you need tons of cash for big old fit outs, just like AMC. These companies like Starbucks, AMC and McDonald's aren't going bankrupt. Only those that don't have an understanding of accounting or business think that bankruptcy is likely. So guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.